Welcome to Salt Lake City in America for the second and third rounds of the 2021 IFSC Boulder World Cup. Salt Lake City hosted a doubleheader event with athletes coming from around the world to compete for that elusive gold medal. The venue in Salt Lake is surrounded by stunning scenery and for the first time since Covid a crowd was in the arena. So let's get cracking. We're starting with qualifications for competition one. Team Japan had made the journey across to America and Miho Nanaka was clearly enjoying the boulder set as she counts down to her Olympic debut. Another Olympian was Great Britain's Shauna Coxie, back after a break and throwing herself into international competition. I think for me, I've had long gaps in my career anyway due to injury and actually the last year or so I've gone through three different surgeries and I'm still kind of coming off the back of that. So yeah, I definitely didn't feel as prepared as I would like to coming in here and it's almost like a test to see where things are at and how much I can like push through pain with my back. So yeah, it was tough out there, but it's so good to be back and like see everybody. I've forgotten what it's like to be in this environment and. Yeah, it feels so familiar and so good. Team France is on strong form at the moment. Fanny Gibert making it into the semi-finals in ninth place. Well, I'm really happy to discover another city and another atmosphere. Like, it's quite different from Vail. And of course, I have always super good vibes here and I love um, to come here and compete here. Today I, I really like the wall and I like that it's pretty not that steep, but I mean in Vail it's really steep and I like it also. I think the root setter have all the card in the hands to make things really different. The competition was of course fierce. But the top 20 women were set and ready for their semi-finals. For the men's qualifying, the American athletes were on home soil, delighted at not having to battle jet lag for a change. Sean Bailey seemed focused and relishing the challenge. It, it's so rad, yeah, it's weird honestly. Like I went to ISO and it didn't feel like a comp to me, so it kind of took me a second to like get into that mindset, but you know, once you're out here and there's a the crowd and everything here. Whenever the Czech Republic's Adam Ondra is competing, he's one of the favourites. He topped all the qualification boulders, making it through to the semi-finals in second place, just behind Japan's Yoshiyuki Ogata. Canadian Sean McCall is a veteran and, of course, competing in the Olympics. His first IFSC comp back of the year and a chance to see how his training was going. His comps are practice, practice, testing, testing, practice. Uh, two World Cups, so I get to you know, do the five on five format. There's five boulders, there's only four at the Olympics, but it doesn't matter, there is bouldering at the Olympics. These boulders are technically gonna be harder than the ones at the Olympics because they need to account for the overall, the combined competitors. So yeah, it's testing. I haven't put my boots on since Vail for bouldering World Cups. I haven't really been out of my house for a year. Uh, I'm going to be able to train at the training center, the USA Training Center, do these two World Cups, go home, practice some more, then head over to Tokyo. Just to demonstrate how hard these quali problems are, Sean could only get 33rd, but he's sure to be looking to peak in his preparations for August and Tokyo.
Uh, we're excited to, to have it here in Salt Lake City. This is the home of our National Government Body USA Climbing, so we wanted to showcase this, this awesome event to, for the, the people in Salt Lake City. As far as getting it going, it's been uh, a, a lot the last couple of weeks, but I think it's going to be a, a you know, fantastic event for, for the community. I don't know if it's quantifiable at this point. I can tell you we started about two weeks ago laying the infrastructure down for the event itself, and then it's been months of planning uh, in the making. So. Anytime you're outside, you've got to build all the infrastructure for the event, so starting with the, the structure that's going to hold up the speed wall, for example, or you know, putting some coverings out, uh, laying out all the power and all the internet. I mean, it's all from ground up. We started out with just a parking lot that we're standing on right now, and if now, and you know, shortly we'll see what we've, what we've created for everyone that'll be out here. maybe 100 steps from where I'm standing right now. I can be in my office sitting at my desk, maybe a little bit further than that, but sure, it's just essentially across the street. Great coming out for us at USA Climbing here in Salt Lake City. Uh, so great partners with the sports, the, the Utah Sports Commission and our partners with industry who we, who we have our office spaces with. It's been a great opportunity for those, those international athletes coming into town for us to utilize our training center and have them come in, not only for our high performance coaching staff to just work with the other coaches, see how they're training, but have a space for these international athletes to come in and warm up for the World Cup that they're about to compete in the next couple of weekends. But yeah, we're excited to have all of these countries represented. And, and man, to be honest, back to an event after a year of hiatus, it feels fantastic to actually be doing something again. And we'll, we'll be fortunate to actually have spectators, uh, whereas the first World Cup, we, they, they couldn't have spectators. So we're, we're excited to, to, again, to have, have some, some sort of normality uh, back in front of us. Time for the women's finals. Six athletes have made it this far and all of them are aiming for the podium. Ochiam Berton, Miho Nanaka, Jessica Pilt, Johanna Faber, Brooke Rabatou and Natalia Grossman gunning for gold. Natalia has been on fire this season and she's continuing her run of form in Salt Lake. Although Boulder 3 took a few attempts, only her and Brooke managed to touch the top. Balance and power needed on this one. Sixteen-year-old Oriane Berton is making huge waves on the comp scene, climbing in an exciting style that's certainly making her a crowd favourite. She climbed Boulder 1 on her second go, putting the pressure on the others and eventually securing her the silver medal. Women's 2 was flashed by everyone in the top four. Ochrian showing composure on her way to that flash. But no one could take victory from Natalia. She threw herself at Boulder 4, persuaded her, persevering over 10 attempts to finish it and receive a gold medal for her efforts. Like I, yeah, <laughs> it was just so special to share this moment with my best friend Brooke, and like this is something we've always dreamed of is to be able to make like a World Cup final together, and it finally happened, and it's just so surreal, so exciting. It was so great to have a crowd, and yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Natalia's best friend and teammate Brooke Rabatou took the bronze medal, rounding out the podium. In the men's finals, we saw some experienced and less experienced athletes on the big stage, with everyone loving being back in front of that cheering crowd. Austria's Jakob Schubert was back at the top, having had a disappointing start to his season in Switzerland. This flying leap and a flash on Boulder 4, ensuring he picked up the bronze medal. Young French athlete Mejdi Schalke was competing in his first senior IFSC boulder final and he put on a stunning display, topping three boulders including this delicate slab. He had power when it counted though, busting out big moves with a flash of boulder four and getting a silver medal. Adam Ondra was looking to build on his last win in that first comp of the season and the inverted boulder three was in his style. He committed to the upside down foot jam, ensuring a flash on his way to gold. He leaves nothing behind and his competitive instinct was in full force as he topped out all the boulders. Something that uh, was definitely very unexpected, um, but most importantly, it's just amazing to climb in the front of a huge crowd after two years. It feels surreal. <laughs> Speechless and <laughs> definitely the really, really good uh, thing happening to all of us. After all this time, uh, we are getting together as a team and participating for the World Cup with that spectator. It's just, uh, yeah, speechless. It's uh, still, we have a uh, a couple of months before the Olympic starts and it's a good competition that all the Olympians get together and see their performances and check on themselves and to find where to work out. So it's a good timing and a good opportunities for all of us. We had a very hard time for the last year, so the training environment was not ideal, uh, as we didn't expect it. So um, the training preparation is not as ideal as it should be, but uh, we are very excited to be here. And each athlete is uh, good at conditions and looking forward to this competition. I can't speak for Tomoa, but yes, um, he's in a very good condition and I'm hoping that he's gonna be on the podium. He's, he's gonna at his own best and then this leads to his podium for this competition. Time for things to get fast, as the first Speed World Cup of the year got underway in Salt Lake. 
This is a knockout format comp, with only the winners progressing through. The losers fighting it out to eventually get to the small final. Japan's Miho Nanaka isn't a speed specialist, but she will have to compete in the discipline for the Olympics. A bronze medal for her was a statement of intent. Surely she's one of the favourites for a medal in Tokyo. Poland's Marcin Zensky made it to the small final and won that heat, snatching the bronze from the USA's John Broster. In the women's main final, it was the USA's Emma Hunt versus Poland's Alexander Miroslav. As usual, things went down to the wire, and Alexander touched the final timing pad just ahead of her rival. A gold medal for her. Ready, but during the final run I did like small mistake on the end of the road so that's why I was a little stressed that I didn't win but I really happy that I did it and yeah it's a special moment for me. Meanwhile in the men's comp it was Indonesia's Kimal Katabin versus his teammate Vedrik Leonardo It was Vidrik who pulled out an amazing run with a new world record of 5.208 and, of course, that gold medal. A world record and a highlight moment that was celebrated throughout the climbing world and beyond. happy today because I've got a gold medal and break the record, break the world record today. It's been really special to compete, you know, in hometown, kind of. I mean, I live in Boulder, Colorado, so I don't live out here, but it does kind of feel like, you know, a little bit like home with so much support and friends and family that have come out from Boulder and just, you know, the whole team here and a really amazing crowd of local climbers. So it was so awesome this past weekend to have their support and we could really feel it on the mats for all the cheering and um, everybody wanting, you know, us to succeed. Just, uh... oh. I've also never done a World Cups back to back, which is really exciting. I've always wanted to. It's kind of like, you know, two chances and just more competing. I feel like after the thrill of a competition weekend, I always want more. And so I'm excited to get more this weekend. Climbing with strong people is definitely helpful. I think both of us have seen that climbing together as well, that we push each other. I moved out here in January, but I've been spending a lot of time here since like September. And I've definitely seen like my climbing levels improve since I've been around here and having all the other strong girls. There's so many strong girls here who push me and it's pretty cool. I, and I think we dreamed of and more 
And so this weekend is just another opportunity to, you know, push ourselves and kind of just the cherry on top of, I think both of us, I mean, we climb because we love it and that'll be the same whether we do well or we don't do well. And some, you know, in the moment that can be really hard to realize, but in the end, one competition won't make or break it, especially break it, it can make it. But <laughs> um, so you can't take last week in a way and this weekend's here just to have more fun. Couldn't say it any better. <laughs> <laughs>
dealing with that pressure from Yanya and flashing every single climb. It was a performance that will live long in people's memories. The dynamic movement's gonna come up. Looks like she's going for it. Oh, not doing the palm compress. She's actually gonna go straight into the zone, looking for a perfect round here. If she's able to top, nobody will be able to catch her, and she'll be solidifying a, another gold medal World Cup win. She thought she was dreaming last weekend. Yeah, I think I had a little more confidence this time, but after semis I was feeling pretty wrecked, so I didn't really know what to expect in finals. It doesn't feel real. It's a dream times two, I guess. The IFSC will now return to Europe in the hunt for that overall winner.